It is also thanks to these suction cups on its arms that it is able to catch and feed on plankton. The starfish employs the hydraulic pressure method in order to move its arms in exactly the same way that machines lift heavy loads with their arms. The starfish has tubular feet along the length of the inside of its arms. These are connected to an internal tubing system full of water. When the muscles contract the tubes, the hydraulic pressure which results sends the liquid to the feet. In this way, hydraulic pressure sets up a wave movement in the feet. Thanks to the liquid pressure within the arms, the feet move, one backwards and one forwards, allowing the starfish to move where it wishes. This flawless design is a proof of creation for believers. In Surah 45, the Almighty God reveals to us the need to consider living things. And in your creation and all the creatures he has spread about, there are signs for people with certainty. The Nautilus is living evidence of creation proved by the fossil record to have undergone no change in the last 500 million years and sufficient on its own to undermine the theory of evolution. The creature takes its name from the submarine in Jules Verne's famous novel and attracts the interest of scientists with its impressive design. The Nautilus has special chambers in its shell there are four of these chambers in newly hatched specimens and up to 30 in mature individuals. The creature occupies only the outermost chamber. The job of the other chambers is, just like in a submarine, to hold in and release air to allow the creature to descend to specific depths. The Nautilus is thus capable of swimming at ease in depths between 90 and 450 meters. The Nautilus rises by filling these chambers with air and descends into the deep by expelling that air. But where does it find that air? Scientists seeking an answer to that question encountered a miraculous system. A special gas is produced by biochemical means inside the Nautilus's body. The gas changes place with the water in the chambers. This technique, which man began to employ in submarines in the 20th century, has been used by the Nautilus for millions of years. The Nautilus employs another interesting technique to move. Jet propulsion. It expels the water it collects under its shell from a hole under its arms. The Nautilus's shell allows it the possibility of camouflaging itself. In this technique, known as countershading in camouflage, someone looking down on the Nautilus from above will be unable to see it because of the thick stripes on its surface. Someone looking from below, on the other hand, perceives its light-colored underside as the same color as the surface of the water. It is quite impossible for the Nautilus itself either to know the chemical reaction which produces the gas or to set up the structure to carry out that reaction inside its own body. Neither the Nautilus nor blind chance design the complex structure within its shell. 
This incomparably superior design is the work of God, who created all that exists. His attribute of El Badi, the originator of all creation, is revealed thus in one verse of the Quran. He is the originator of the heavens and the earth. The cuttlefish possesses a very complex eye structure. At this point, it is out of the question for it to miss its prey. The better your eyes see around you, the more you have to conceal yourself. It has ten limbs, all of which possess muscular sucker discs. It can swim quickly or slowly. It moves by forcing water from a siphon beneath its head. With its hydrodynamic shape, which allows it to progress without encountering water resistance, the cuttlefish is one of the fastest moving sea creatures. Some species are capable of swimming at 33 kilometers an hour. The secret behind such great speed is a network of protein fibers woven through its body. Thanks to the strength and elasticity of these fibers, it is able to pump water very quickly. There is one very important point here which needs careful attention. The working principle of today's jet propulsion engines is exactly the same as that of the cuttlefish a technique which mankind only began to imitate in the 20th century has been used by the cuttlefish for millions of years. The octopus is an eight-armed hunter. It uses a most interesting method of concealing itself from other animals. Camouflage. The cells which make up its skin automatically adapt to its surroundings and replicate, just like a mirror, their color and texture. The octopus's eyes are very sharp. It can identify changes in its surroundings most effectively and thus changes the color and pattern of its skin in accordance with its surroundings. Its skin is covered in special pigment-containing cells known as chromatophores. These cells in the skin expand or shrink when stimulated by the nervous system, creating color patterns that can be changed instantly. Different cells carry different color pigments and these allow countless color combinations and patterns to form. The creature most frequently hunted by the octopus is the crab. The octopus expertly defends itself from the crab's powerful pincers and its teeth are strong enough to break the crab's shell. With its superior features, this hunter, which consists of moving muscles, is a perfect creature which conceals itself in the finest possible way. It is impossible for the octopus to have felt the need to conceal itself from other creatures and then to have installed special color cells in its skin. This splendid camouflage system possessed by the octopus is, without doubt, an example of the flawless creation of the all-knowing God. This is a lionfish. Its aggressive appearance is no bluff. It is a genuinely dangerous animal. The fins 